Why play one when you can play two? That's right, a doubleheader on the way on the campus of Trinity University as the Harden Simmons Cowboys ride into town. I'm Brian Yanselson, joined again by Cole Isaacson. Cole, last week we had a thrilling three-game series against Birmingham Southern. The Trinity Tigers really performing quite well, escaping with that win in the last game of the series, and we're excited to see how they rebound against a good Harden Simmons team this weekend. Absolutely. Had one of their toughest challenges of the season just last week against Birmingham Southern. An offense that was potent, scored over 10 runs a game usually. Didn't do it in the series against Trinity, though. Only nine games all of last season where they were held under 10. The Tigers able to get three. Their pitching staff really performed well, and that was a big question entering the season. And I think we got a lot of answers last week. We'll see if it continues into this series. It'll be another pretty good offense this weekend, Harden-Simmons bringing in a lineup that went 0-3 last weekend, but they are ready to face the Trinity Tigers this weekend, and these are the nine that will do it. Leading off at second base, Luke Kirkbride, batting second in left field, Cole Antonelli. Batting third, the transfer at shortstop, Colby Seltzer. The cleanup hitter at third base, Gannon Azios. Batting fifth, the designated hitter, Jeremy Colon. Batting sixth in right field, Kyler Reed. Batting seventh at first base, Sam Bukowski. Catching for game one, Bryson Holt batting eighth. And batting ninth, the center fielder, Nick Ellington. So those are the nine Cowboys that will face the starting pitcher who went out on opening day and will be out there to open this series, the junior from Laredo, Texas, Joseph Shavana. And he impressed, as he did all last year, already starting the season on a high note, Cole. Yeah, Joseph Shavana, a lot of pitches working for him. He's got different pitches for each type of hitter. Really used all of them pretty effectively last week. A good start, limiting Birmingham Southern to three runs. We'll see if he can do it again today against the Cowboys. First pitch to Kirk Bright, put into play, and that's going to go down the line. What a way to get it going for the Cowboys. That'll be a double as the left fielder Preston struggles to get a hold of it. So a lead off two bagger for Luke Kirkbride, the sophomore from Denison, Texas, not wasting any time. Yeah, first pitch hit. Definitely not something you want. You're going to see the replay here. Just able to find a way to get a piece of that, and it's really tough for the defense when that ball goes down the line like that. Bounces off the wall. Preston has a tough time handling it because of that. Able to get two bases out of it. Second pitch of the game in the dirt. Lazara can't get in front of it, and that'll move the runner over to third base. Two pitches into this game. The Cowboys have a go-ahead run 90 feet away. Definitely not the start you want. Able to advance to third, but we'll see if they're able to hold it down here. Cole Antonelli at the plate, looks at a fastball high. Antonelli, the junior from Flower Mound, Texas. So two juniors here, although the grades you see on the Cowboys roster not always exactly accurate because of COVID throwing that count off. A ground ball to short here, Montreza handles it. Gets the throw to first, but that'll drive in the first run of the game. Cowboys playing a little small ball, moving the runner over to third thanks to that wild pitch. And then a sacrifice, getting the ground ball to drive him in. 1-0, Harden-Simmons in the first. Yeah, that was something they really struggled with, runners in scoring position. Didn't get the hit there, but able, as you said, to play small ball and just bring him in. And that's what you need to do. Start this game getting the lead early. Now the bases are empty for the big power bat of Colby Seltzer. The senior transfer from Tarleton State University. Lazara setting up inside. Shavana gets it across and low. Falls behind 2-0 here on number 15, who has spent a good amount of time at the Division I level. Big swing here, sends it out to center field. It'll send the outfielders running, but Jack Peterson is there in time for the second out of the inning. Yeah, able to range over and make the play. The sky is going to be an interesting variable today. Overcast, it can be really tough for those outfielders, especially on a high fly ball. The ball tends to just blend in with the background in that situation. But Peterson looked like he had no trouble there. More first pitch swinging, this time a little chopper to second base. Cole Terrace has it, and that'll be the third out of the inning. So Harden Simmons starts off with a bang, a double, a wild pitch, and a ground ball to bring him in. Tigers will be coming to bat after the break, trying to tie it back up.
Welcome back. A very quick top of the first inning gets Harden Simmons on top, and now these nine Trinity Tigers will look to even it up. Leading off once again, Ty Preston in left field. Christian Holloway batting second at third base. The power hitting catcher batting third, Nick Lazera. Batting cleanup, the right fielder Ezra Gore. Batting fifth, the des designated hitter Brandon Nelson. Batting sixth, the shortstop Michael Montreza. In center field, batting seventh, Jack Peterson. At second base, once again as well, Cole Harris. And rounding it out at first base, Corson Hastings. And they will face Caden Livingston, the sophomore from Lorena, Texas. Got the opening day start as well for the Cowboys last week against George Fox. And now looking to keep some success going against a potent Trinity offense that woke up at the end of last weekend. First pitch to Preston, a strike inside. Yeah, you called it, Brian. Woke up at the end of last weekend, had 14 hits in game two, nine hits in game three after only recording two in game one. They were able to find something in those final two games. We'll see if they can carry it over today. Livingston misses with the ball to even up the count at one. It was a unique series in that Trinity lost two of three, but they actually out-hit and outscored the Birmingham Southern Panthers. And as you talked about, Cole, one of the best teams Trinity will face the entire year. The vibe outside when we went after the games was really positive. The coaches and the players happy with how they played against BSE. And looking to ride some momentum, knowing that they took one of those games and really the most important one in many ways, that last one to carry you into the next week, feeling good about yourself. Ty Preston, the 2-2 count, flips it over to left field, giving chase to it and getting there in time. A nice running play there. Losing the hat as well is the left fielder, Cole Antonelli. We'll get a look at the replay. Just taking it where it came from was Preston. And not an easy play, especially with the limited foul territory you see right away running into the bullpen. So a quick out for Livingston. Now facing Christian Holloway. This pitch strike to Holloway. Now I want to go back to what you said about Birmingham Southern. Out hitting and out scoring them. I think that they might be one of the only teams that gets to do that all season against those guys. And they didn't take two games, only got the one. But still really good atmosphere coming out of that series. Holloway goes down to get the 0-2 delivery. Stays alive in this at-bat. Christian Holloway, the junior from Brownsville, Texas. Takes it outside, and that's a strike three on the corner. Livingston dotting exactly where he wanted it. Two quick outs for the sophomore. Yeah, this is a really good pitch. Right on that edge, makes Holloway think twice about swinging. Doesn't do it, and able to get him looking. So here is Nick Lazera, and not many people had a better weekend than Nick Lazera. Had his five for 12 sound with two homers, four RBI, drew a couple of walks as well, and firmly in that third spot in the lineup now. And think about it, went five for 12, and that's after not getting a hit in the first game of the series. So just Saturday and Sunday, absolutely raking you didn't even talk about the two home runs. Able to hit solo shot and a three-run homer that counted for half of Trinity's runs in game three. Talked to him about those home runs, asking how did they feel, and he said, well, the first one took a second to know it was out of here, but then that second one, he knew right away. Fights that one off down low as Livingston continues to get ahead of the Tiger hitters in this first inning. Livingston himself had a good outing. He took the loss last week, but he pitched well. Six innings, eight hits, four earned runs allowed, and four strikeouts against George Fox as Lazera muscles that one foul once more. Very importantly for Livingston, zero walks allowed in those six innings against George Fox. It was a game that Harden Simmons trailed 4-0 after three, but then they scored one in three separate innings to make it close. Just couldn't get over the hump. Another strike three called on the outside part of the plate. A 1-2-3 inning by Caden Livingston going right through the top of the order. And we'll get a look at it here right where his catcher Holt wanted it. Good job of him framing it, maybe a little outside. But the umpire says two strikeouts for Livingston. We'll take a quick break on Tiger Network and be back for the top of the second.
A gorgeous look at the brand new turf on Trinity University's baseball field. Happy to have the drone back flying out today. And gives us a unique perspective of something we see very differently when you're down at field level. Absolutely. It's been great talking to these players and coaches, figuring out how they're adjusting to the turf. Coach Smith telling me that he hopes for some more confidence defensively just because of the routine hops and that his infielders are going to feel like that they can really get anything and make almost any play just from that confidence being carried over from knowing where the ball's going. Breaking ball, bounce past Shavana. Harris gets there in time. Throws it in time to retire Colon, and that's the first out of the inning on a pair of pitches for Shavana, who really dealt with some tough luck last week. Gave up six hits, took the loss as well, had seven strikeouts though, and gave up three earned runs, but they were runs in very unique varieties. If you tuned into Tiger Network, you might remember us highlighting that as a first pitch, ground ball Harris very busy on in this beginning of the game. Two outs on three pitches for Joseph Shavana looking on a roll. And he was on a roll most of last game, but he gave up uh, bases loaded, sacrifice fly, a bases loaded balk, and then a wild pitch to score the three runs. So it wasn't really like the Panthers were making super hard contact. They just came through in the moments that mattered most. Yeah, absolutely. Some pretty unorthodox runs. Panthers able to play some baseball, just get runs in in weird ways. But he really limited it, the damage. And I talked to Coach Smith about that. And he said that he wants Joseph Schiavone to do the exact same thing that he did against BSC and carry it into today. Loops in a first pitch breaking ball to Sam Bukowski. Bukowski chops that one foul. Junior from Scottsdale, Arizona, one of very few Cowboys not from the Lone Star State. And you get to see Shivana. Ready on the rubber, trying to hit Lazera inside, does. Look at what he did to the swing of the Arizona native, had nowhere to go, he went around and that is a one, two, three inning for Shavana, perfectly hitting his spot and forcing Bukowski to fall down. He'll certainly take that. Great pitch, able to get him inside unexpectedly, able to get him to fall down as you said. Nice bounce back for Shavana. Gave up one run in the first, but a clean top of the second. So we'll take another break on Tiger Network and be back for the bottom half. A 1-0 lead for Harden-Simmons after one and a half. And Ezra Gore will step to the plate, the cleanup hitter today. A very unusual weekend for the senior. Looks at a ball outside for ball one. 0 for 9 against Birmingham Southern. No hits in three games. And you want to hear just how rare that is as he fouls that one back. Last year, Ezra Gore played in 50 games. How many of those did he not have a hit in? A total of eight games. Already three without a base hit for Ezra Gore. So I was talking to him this week saying, what's going on? What happened? And he says, hey, just getting all the bad games out now. I'm going to get a hit in every game from now on. So you heard it here first. Ezra Gore going to get a hit in every game. We'll see if he lives up to the promise. Grounds that one to shortstop. Going to have to hurry to get the speedy Gore. And he does. Seltzer over there at short. So no hit yet for Ezra Gore. 0 for 10 to start the year. 
for someone who hit 351 a season ago. Yeah, I don't know. Normally, I wouldn't believe that somebody's going to get a hit in every game, but with him, I wouldn't put it past him. Still has plenty of at bats today, especially with the way the lineup's been going through. But Ezra Gore, definitely one of the players that they want to get some hits. I think he'll do just that as the season continues. He certainly got close, a 31 game hit streak a year ago. Brandon Nelson now at the plate, takes that change up down low. Brandon Nelson also a tough weekend at the plate. As a designated hitter, looks at another change up down and away. Two for 12, three strikeouts, did start in all three games. Goes to show how much Coach Gannel wants him in the lineup. Knows he'll get it going sooner rather than later. And he's ahead in the count 3-1 on Livingston. Who has retired the first four Tigers, but now may have to challenge Nelson here. We'll see what he goes with. Fastball ripped down the right field line. And it's going to get down. Nelson turning first. It gets to right field quickly, but he's going to hustle into second base for a double. And there you go, a 3-1 double for Brandon Nelson, the first hit of the game for the Trinity Tigers. Yeah, this is the first time they've really gotten ahead on Livingston, able to get more balls than strikes. Nelson getting a more predictable pitch. Livingston forced to throw in the zone, and he's able to take advantage of it with a double in the first hit for Trinity today. It'll bring up the shortstop, Michael Montreza, and he had one of the better weekends at the plate for the Maroon and White. Four for nine, a double, and drew four walks. Extremely patient at the plate. Spent a good majority of the weekend at the top of the lineup. Here takes a bunt for a strike. Yeah, Montreza started the weekend, I think, at the two spot, definitely in that top three. But as the weekend moved on, Coach Scandal moved him down in the lineup, and he, that's where most of his production has come from, and that's where we're seeing him again today. He's got the third baseman playing in after he showed bunt. Now a breaking ball in there for a strike. Third baseman, Ozios, will now back up with the two-strike count, though still even with the bag. Rest of the infield playing normal depth. We've got Brandon Nelson at second, Montreza behind 0-2, Livingston keeping an eye on the runner. Taking a good amount of time now, several looks at him, and now Nelson scoots back, but the pitch delivered and fouled the other way. Yeah, Montreza able to stay alive. I think the goal for Trinity, just do what Harden Simmons did. They had a guy on, the only guy they've had on all day so far, but they're just able to bring him around and then able to get him in. Trinity can do the same thing here. They can tie this game. Pitch on the way, breaking ball, able to lay off is Montreza. Not easy after Livingston just had one in there for a strike. Still one and two in favor of Livingston. Yeah, you call that, Brian, not easy when he's able to locate that pitch for a strike, but Montreza able to lay off of it. Nelson bouncing around there off of second. Pitch on the way to Montreza. Another foul ball. I think that's Montreza's doing a good job of making him work a little bit. Livingston hasn't had a lot of issues getting through the lineup so far. A lot of quick at-bats. Montreza fouling some pitches off, trying to make him earn this one. The 1-2 delivery. High fastball, grounded to Ozios. Takes a look at Nelson. Now guns down Montreza for the second out of the inning. Picture perfect for Livingston. Keeps the runner at second while getting an out. Now he'll just have to get through Jack Peterson, who just like Montreza had a very solid weekend. Four for 11. Scored a pair of runs and was a key defender more than anything in center field. No one can track him down quite like Jack Peterson. Yeah, we've already seen it today. The one ball that's hit out, they're able to track it down pretty easily, it looked like, despite the conditions. Not very good for an outfielder with overcast. Fastball inside, nearly hits Peterson, gets out of the way. It was that Saturday game that he was looking particularly good at the plate. Three hits across for the center fielder, who so far getting very consistent playing time. Four starts in four games, skies this one the other way. Giving chases Antonelli and Ellington. It is Ellington who calls it off. And the third out of the inning retired for Harden Simmons. So a double from Brandon Nelson, but Livingston works around it and keeps his Cowboys on top one to zero. We'll take a break on Tiger Network and be back for the top of the third.
Time for the top of the third from San Antonio, Texas. Harden Simmons with a 1-0 lead over Trinity. Joseph Shavana giving up that first inning run. It was a quick one if you tuned in late. A leadoff double on the very first pitch, got over on a wild pitch, and then scored on a ground ball to short. Cowboys looking to add on here. Bryson Holt leading off, takes a slider outside for a ball. Shavana, despite giving up the one run, has worked through this lineup pretty efficiently and has done so very quickly. I believe he threw less than 10 pitches last inning. Gets a strike on the outside corner here to even it up at one. Make it one and two, actually. Siobhan ahead of the catcher, who got one start last year, able to wait back on a breaking ball and pokes it into right field for a base hit. Bryson holds his first hit of the year, went 0 for 5 with two strikeouts against Concordia last weekend. Usually, if you're a Cowboy fan, you will see Jet Forrest behind the dish as catcher. But with a doubleheader today, Coach Coleman perhaps electing to start Holt in game one, knowing that he'll have Jet Forrest for game two. And so far, the backup catcher doing a nice job with that two-strike hit to bring up Nick Ellington, the sophomore outfielder. Yeah, we'll see Jet Forrest at some point today. Um, he'll definitely start game two. We'll see if he gets a pinch hit or not in this game. We know they did that last weekend. But Jet Forrest, definitely a key cog in this Cowboy lineup. Number nine hitter, showing bunt, couldn't get it down, went foul. Nick Ellington had a solid weekend for the Cowboys. Four for 11, drove three runs in in all three games. Harden Simmons 0-3 so far, but those losses were close. They lost 4-3 to to George Fox. They lost 10-8 to to Concordia, Texas. And then a little bit more of a lopsided loss, but still close for much of the game against Pacific Lutheran 8-3. Those three games happening on the field of Concordia, so a little tournament in Austin that Harden-Simmons went winless in, but still a good energy around the team, says head coach Steve Coleman. Have to understand that it's not where you start, it's where you finish. This is a Harden-Simmons team looking to build off of a 22-21 and 21 year. That was a major improvement from a nine-win season just a season before that. And so trending in the right direction here for Harden-Simmons is that one in the turf, Lazera. A nice job getting in front of it and keeping the runner at first. Yeah, really nice job there. And that's keeping him from getting in scoring position. But that's one thing Coach Coleman outlined when we talked to him was that they really struggled with runners in scoring position. And those three games could have been completely different if they were able to bring more guys in from there. 1-2, Lazera inside. Shavana gets it there. And Tonelli battles it foul. Another thing he talked about was that nine-win season. He talked about how hard that was on him. It was his worst year, I think, in his 25 years being there, 26, I think. And he said that it was he was glad it happened to him later in his coaching career because he said that would have devastated him had he been a younger coach. But more maturity, being around for a long time, able to deal with it better. Absolutely a very experienced coach. You might have some thoughts about that breaking ball called for a strike. You saw Ellington take a while to leave the batter's box. The umpire had a very late call on one that may have been outside the zone, but Shavana will certainly take it for the first out of the inning. He continues to check on the runner. Holt over there at first. We'll get a great look at it here. Yeah, Lazera did an excellent job bringing it back. Not sure that is strike three. Yeah, that's definitely the one the umpire went back, but Shivana will take it. Gets ahead of the leadoff hitter now, Kirk Bride, top of the order. Back up for Harden Simmons. Breaking ball, that's exactly where Shivana wants it. Swing and a miss, 0 to the count. Really close to getting out of this one, just trying to keep that runner at first. He was able to advance to second because he hit the double and then get to third on the pass ball. Because that one's in the dirt. But, you know, able to give up that early hit and then it's how do you respond? And if he's able to get an out here, he will have responded very well. More pickoff attempts on Holt there. That's four now in the inning. Breaking ball, higher than the strike three call that the umpire made, so the count two and two. Really a missed opportunity if you're Harden Simmons. That two strike hit from the backup catcher, then the number nine hitter tried to put down the bunt and couldn't. 
Would have been nice for them to have the top of the lineup have a couple of opportunities with a man in scoring position. Instead, a full count for Kirkbride looking to pick up the number nine hitter. An all ASC honorable mention at the plate here. The sophomore will have to wait one more moment. If there's one thing you'll see with this Harden-Simmons lineup and the roster at large, many returning players. And Kirkbride, one of them, gets underneath one here. Three men will give it chase. Can Holloway get there? No, it'll go into the bullpen. Kirkbride staying alive. Shivana using a lot of pickoff attempts, trying to do everything he can to keep that runner at first. Understanding the situation that if he allows him to get to second, a base hit probably scores. This one nearly gets away from Hastings instead. He's gonna be out. What an athletic play by Corson Hastings to save the ball from going behind him. And in the meantime, getting Holt on the pickoff. We'll get this look at it. Tough to tell on that view if the glove did get on the runner. Yeah, this one might be a closer look or not, but <laughs> do they say? Yeah, they call him out. They call him out. And instead of first and second with one out, it'll be runner on first with two outs as Kirkbride wins the at-bat, draws the walk, but a nice job. Shivana, he persevered with those pickoff attempts, and his first baseman really helped him out there. An athletic play by number 44 that brings up Cole Antonelli, second hole hitter. It is something this pitching staff has done in and out of practice, and you see it once again. Once again Joseph Shavana continuing to check on the runner. It is something these pitchers have been wanting to do. There's so much more to pitching, says Dave Smith, than just throwing strikes. You have to manage a game, keep runners off the base pass, and from stealing here, it'll be a de facto stolen base as the ball gets past Lazera, so Kirkbride over to second. But in general, especially against a team like Birmingham Southern last week that nearly led the nation in stolen bases, these pitchers extremely aware of keeping them close and helping their catchers out as much as possible. Yeah, absolutely, just having more game awareness, and that's something we'll see a lot with Jackson Tier tomorrow. Is that says, Coach Smith says he does a great job managing the game. Shavana manages this inning. A couple of runners reach, but the pickoff and a ground ball to short ends it. So Shavana one run allowed through three innings for him. Tigers looking to get their bats going in the bottom half of the inning. Already one hit, an extra base one. Can they get more off of Livingston? We'll find out soon. Bottom of the third on the way on Tiger Network. Caden Livingston will deal with Colt Harris and Corson Hastings before flipping it over to Jack, make it Ty Preston, sorry, to start this inning. Colt Harris will be the first one to step in. And he did what he does best, and he just seemingly does it so quietly. A cool 300, going 3 for 10 against Birmingham Southern, scoring a pair of runs, driving one in, drawing three walks. It's almost like we've gotten used to it at this point. As he looks at a first pitch fastball for a strike. The first one for a strike. One and one the count. And now takes that same fastball into the hole. Getting there is the shortstop Seltzer and using the turf to his advantage. Bouncing it right to Bukowski. 
So a tough play made a little bit easier by this new turf. Yeah, Livingston doing a great job, able to get a lot of soft contact so far. No different there. It was a quick at bat, but we talked about Colt Harris. He's been towards the bottom of the lineup a lot this season. And when you think of him, you think he'd be towards the top of that lineup in those top three spots. But if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And not broken right now, this Cowboy defense. Antonelli, his second stellar play out there in left. First one was chasing it down near the bullpen and now sliding in to make the grab. This is a Cowboy defense that struggled a bit last week and struggled throughout last year. They made nine errors in those three losses, a big part of why they lost those close calls. But maybe already we're seeing what the Trinity coaches have told us and the Trinity players as well. At the end of the day, this turf will neutralize any fielding advantage. Might take a while for the visiting team to get adjusted, but once they do, they'll realize it really helps you out. Yeah, and I think that there's something to the fact that they played at, Con at Concordia last week. The turf field probably adjusted to a lot of the bounces, so maybe we'll see better fielding from Harden Simmons today. Excellent point right there, Cole. Concordia, the model that Trinity used and that these Trinity coaches are using for their mindset of how this turf is going to work. Preston lines it to the second baseman. Another nice play, though, by Kirkbride. And that's a one, two, three inning for Harden Simmons. Caden Livingston living up to his name, keeping this Trinity offense quiet as we head to the top of the fourth. Still lots of baseball to go. Going to the top of the fourth, and it's the first game of a doubleheader. So stick around with us on Tiger Network. Just 30 minutes into this game, and we're already in the top of the fourth. Joseph Shavana, despite giving up the early run, working quickly, working efficiently, has given up a pair of hits, and that one came around the score in the first. Now he'll have to deal with the heart of the Harden-Simmons order. Colby Seltzer takes a first pitch breaking ball for a strike. What a way to introduce yourself to Cowboy Nation for Colby Seltzer. Eight for 15, drove in four runs, scored one, even stole a base as he made his debut, transferring from Tarleton State. This is someone who played 138 games over three years at the Division I level, and now he's here with Harden Simmons. They are thrilled to have him. It's another breaking ball loops in there for a strike. But Coach Coleman saying he's just a baseball player. He has come in with a great attitude, not thinking, oh, I'm a Division I player, I'm better than everybody else, fitting right in and really helping the squad. And he has fit right into that middle of the order. And I'd say 8 for 15 is a great introduction to the university. Yeah, absolutely. Really excited to get him into the lineup, really moving a lot of pieces around, uh, moving Luke Kirkbride to second base, and then Brandon Martin out of the lineup as that gets in for a base hit, just as we're singing his praises. Yeah, and you see, not trying to do too much, despite being a power hitter, not looking to do too much with it, a two-strike delivery. And he hit that with one hand. Sent it over the second base bag. Colt Harris couldn't dive in time. And a leadoff base hit for Harden Simmons, thanks to Colby Seltzer. And as we talk about Tarleton State, only fitting that Gannon Ozios is the man right behind him. He'll take a first pitch ball in the dirt. Gannon Ozios has spent one year with Harden Simmons, but before that, he too transferred from the Division I school in Stephenville, Texas. How did that happen, you might ask? Well, Coach Coleman says the buddy system works very well. Gannon Ozios loved being in Abilene, and he said, you should join me as he sends this one out to left field. No problem for Ty Preston. 
But we've got a couple of Texans, literally, as the Tarleton State Texans become Cowboys. Yeah, he talked about the buddy system and talking about getting Colby Seltzer over here. And you mentioned it earlier, he talked about that attitude, not having that moxie of being a Division I player. They, he, talk, he told this interesting story about how they have only have 39 lockers and how they carry about 50-ish people. It's not unusual to have 45 to 60 people on their Division Three roster. But he said it makes them share lockers, and it says that just because you're very talented, it doesn't make you better than anyone else. And it does a great job of creating a good team, chem team chemistry there. Breaking ball to Cologne, fouled straight down into the turf. It's a unique mantra, welcoming anybody who wants to give it a shot, forcing them to double up those lockers. But at the end of the day, they do end up filling those 39 slots. Not the biggest roster you'll ever see at the Division Three level. Some teams don't cut, but Harden Simmons not afraid to let people go. Coleman does say that is the toughest part of his job. But he's found the Cowboys he wants to work with this year. Cologne, one of them, he's happy to have back. That one inside, runner going, and no chance does he have to beat the throw of Nick Lazera. He is just too good back there. That is the third runner caught stealing by Nick Lazera. Yep, you said third runner caught stealing was an impact player in that way against the Panthers last week who really loved the steal. No different today, able to get him there. Change up misses low to give Cologne the advantage in the at bat, but now no runners on. So between Shavana and Lazera, a pickoff and a stolen base attempt thrown out. That's keeping runners off the base pass, and just like last inning, though, right after the pickoff, a walk to put another runner on, but these are innings that could have gotten worse had it not been for the pickoff and the caught stealing. Yeah, absolutely. It's those key plays, and they've been practicing this all week. They've really been practicing situations where you have a guy on and what to do and how to handle yourself. And you can see the improvement. It's a great job by Lazera, able to keep him at first there. He can do so much well. We've already highlighted his work behind the plate, and we continue to highlight his work at the plate. can do a little bit of everything. Three for nine now on stolen base attempts. So that means a third of the guys trying to steal have not been successful. It's a pretty good average for a catcher. Kyler Reed will try to keep the inning going. Lines one into left field. Preston's not going to get there. An opposite field single. And that is going to be four base hits now for the Harden Simmons Cowboys. Kyler Reed not wasting any time in his two at bats, going with the first pitch twice. This time works out better for him, and the Cowboys have something going. Yep, able to get a runner into scoring position, but this is going to be the challenge for Harden Simmons. What Coach Coleman said, guys that he highlighted as, quote, key guys were 0 for 15 with runners in scoring position in their last series. We'll see if they can get a hit here. Breaking ball blocked by Lazera. And it'll bring a visit to the mound thanks to Dave Smith seeing something he wants to chat with Shavana about. A big moment early in this game as you get an epic look at Trinity University's campus. So much going on today. A pair of basketball games later on. The men playing at 6, the women playing at 4 against Southwestern. Some thrilling games yesterday. TLU coming to town and the Tigers sweeping them right out of here. But right now it is the baseball diamond we are focused on and mainly Joseph Shavana, the starting pitcher, running into some trouble here. Four base hits. Already won across the score back in the first, and the Cowboys have a pair of runners that are threatening to make it a bigger lead for Harden-Simmons. Yeah, this is something Shavana did a great job of last week. Able, Birmingham Southern able to get the three runs in some kind of unorthodox ways, but for the most part, Shavana was able to get out of a lot of jams where guys were on first and second and even third sometimes. And he's going to need to do it again to keep this a one-run deficit. The 1-0 on the way to Bukowski takes another breaking ball. Ahead in the count, 2-0. Coach Coleman saying, why did they struggle with runners in scoring position? Well, guys expanding the zone, trying a little bit too hard to make something happen. You just have to let guys come to you. 
in his opinion. And so far in this at bat, Bukowski not chasing the breaking ball outside, getting ahead 3-0. And you have to believe he'll be taking on this count as well, considering what happened last weekend, but you never know. Will Shavana challenge him with a fastball? He does, it's a strike. But still in command of this at bat with runner on first, runner on second, Cologne and Reed. A 3-1 count on the way to Bukowski, the junior from Arizona. Standing very tall at 6'4", 200 pounds. Sends it the other way, it'll go foul right alongside the bag. Great job by Shivana there, getting that fastball in on the 3-0 count, getting the breaking ball there. Now 3-2, able to battle back. We'll see if he can finish him off coming back from 3-0. Runners will be off with the pitch. 3-2, two, two outs, two runners on. Cowboys trying to extend their lead in the top of the fourth. Shivana has his sign. Lazara setting up inside, and that's going to be strike number three. Joseph Shavana gets out of trouble. Maybe not exactly where he wanted it, but Bukowski couldn't get the bat off his shoulders. Going to see the replay. It's going to be on that outside edge again. Borderline, but I think that might have gotten over the plate. Think back to that earlier strikeout that he had. Pitch way outside. Got the call. Why not go back to it, see if he can get it again. He got it when he needed it. Three strikeouts on the day for Shavana, And the Harden-Simmons Cowboys continue to struggle with runners in scoring position. A break on the way on Tiger Network as you enjoy the beautiful San Antonio skyline. It's a chilly day in San Antonio, Texas. 51 degrees, mostly cloudy as you get that look at Trinity and right in the heart of San Antonio, Texas, the seventh largest city in the country. So lucky to be in the center of a beautiful city. And right now these Tigers swinging early, swinging often. And for Caden Livingston, exactly what he wants. The first pitch out for the transfer from Murray State Community College. That is located in case you're wondering, let's see if I can get this right, Tishomingo, Oklahoma, hopefully. But one of many, many transfer players for Harden-Simmons, 15 of them to be exact. As he delivers a first pitch strike to Nick Lazera. But that's something Coach Coleman really talked about. Can't really rely on it as a head coach, but it's always nice to be able to plug some guys in as Nick Lazera goes down to get one, golfs it into right. And that's gonna be a base hit for Lazera as it drops in. Not gonna take a wide turn out of that because it was hit so hard, he just continues to barrel up baseballs. Yep, he, as you said, Brian, he always hits the ball hard. That's really never an issue with it when it comes to him. Able to go and get that one and get some base runners for Trinity. Haven't had a lot today. Ezra Gore, first pitch swinging. Tough play for Livingston. Nice pick over there by Bukowski. Gore moves the runners over. But out of three hitters, two of them swinging at the first pitch. Yeah, I think that's a similar trap that we saw in game one against Birmingham Southern. We saw it a lot with Joey White. Swinging early, swinging often. A lot of soft contact that didn't go well for him. Right now you have coach Steve Coleman checking on his pitcher after that play. 
Maybe showed a little grimace, and he continues to stretch out there on the mound, but Coleman being told, I'm okay, by his starting pitcher. And he is more than okay with the results he is getting. It's only fitting that these Cowboys are in town. During the San Antonio Rodeo, you have a look at the AT&T Center. Amazing that we can see it from all the way over here. The saying goes, let's rodeo San Antonio. And Harden Simmons listened. They made their way here. You gone to the rodeo yet, Cole? I have not gone to the rodeo, Brian. You have to see it to believe it. A San Antonio staple as Nelson fouls that one back for two and a half weeks. You've got the fairgrounds, a carnival going on in the AT&T Center, and inside the building itself, barrel racing, lassos everywhere you turn, cowboy hats, boots. I think these Harden Simmons Cowboys will fit right in if they take a trip over there after tonight. And Livingston might make it sooner rather than later with the way he is pitching. A base hit giving up to Lazera, but a strikeout of Nelson. And that is four shutout innings for Caden Livingston in San Antonio. Yeah, able to work really well with all of his pitches so far. We were talking about the soft contact earlier, but this time able to get the strikeout, getting outs in different ways, and he has been efficient today. Absolutely efficient, a good word for it. We'll stick right here during the break. It's been some quick innings. So we'll stick around on Tiger Network. No, we have you for two games, and we're so excited for that because you can never have enough baseball. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely, though. The coaches had some choice words about the doubleheaders. Not very happy with doubleheaders. I think Coach Scandal said that they should be abolished. But, you know, always happy to have more baseball. We'll take the three games however we can get them. It is very tough on these players, and it'll be a really interesting thing to see as we get deeper into this game. We should note, that the American Southwest Conference, which is where Harden Simmons plays, has a setup in which they play nine innings on Fridays, seven innings on Saturdays, and nine innings on Sundays. And when they play doubleheaders, if they ever do, they don't go to nine innings. Well, the plan this weekend is to go to nine innings in all three games, and so the real world on-field impact of that will be Harden Simmons will have to come up with some extra arms, extra innings that they're not used to. But so far, Livingston doing exactly what he hopes to do as the game one starter, giving them depth and taking it all the way to the top of the fifth where Shavana will have to keep Harden Simmons off the board and give his offense a chance to work. Yeah, we're talking about Coach Smith about, we're talking to Coach Smith about the seven inning game as opposed to a nine inning game and what that does for your bullpen. And he says basically it's one less guy that you get to throw in each weekend. And he says that the downside of that is when you get to a playoff series where you have to play three games in three days and they're nine innings, well, all of a sudden, that guy that you need in that situation hasn't pitched all year, and then that can be a detriment to you. So he said that you're really doing yourself no favors when you pitch seven innings in game two. Fouled in front of the plate. Lazera all over it in case it was fair, but it is not. So Bryson Holt appearing in this game one of a doubleheader in place of Jet Forest. Already got one two-strike hit. In the same count he was the first time around, lays off an off-speed delivery outside. 2-2 Two -two the count on Holt. Shavana in his motion, tries to get him chasing. But these Cowboys patiently awaiting for the strikes to get there. Last inning, Bukowski maybe a little too patient, took one right in the zone to strand a couple of runners. Here, Holt will not keep his bat on his shoulder, sends it the other way. Gore gets underneath it and retires the first out of the inning. And I think you're seeing kind of the different strategies in the batter's box from Trinity versus Harden Simmons. Harden Simmons a lot more patient, wanting the pitches to come to them. Trinity swinging early, swinging often. And so far, Harden Simmons is the one who's had more base runners. Curveball lands in there for a strike. And as you sit home and watch Joseph Shavana enjoy his work on the mound, you might notice his funky delivery. And that's the word that everyone you talk to uses to describe him, funky. There's just something about the way he brings the pitch to the plate that makes it hard for hitters to see. And I remember talking to him last year about it. He's not really sure where it came from. It's just kind of how he's always done it. 
One name he did mention, Jacob DeGrom. Especially with the high leg kick, trying to keep it balanced. But other than that, no one he really bases it off of. Just happened as he grew up as a baseball player. And he delivers a curveball right where he wanted it, but able to foul it off there is Ellington. Well, said it earlier, Brian. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And that delivery has been working for Shivana for a while now. 1-2, lined up the middle for a base hit. You can hear the cheers coming from the Harden Simmons faithful. A good amount of purple and gold in the stands today. Texas natives everywhere you look. And Ellington, one of them, the sophomore from Mansfield, Texas, continues the production coming out of the bottom of the order. And now Kirkbride and Antonelli should get a shot at it with a runner on base. Yeah, able down two strikes, able to get one and able to get on base. That's what Harden Simmons needs to do. They just need to get him over. You got him on, now you gotta get him over and bring him in, try and extend this lead. Fastball taken the other way. It's gonna get down the line, fair ball. Cowboys off and running. Kirkbride will stay at first. The stop sign put up at third. Runners on the corners with one away for Cole Antonelli coming up. As these Cowboys not trying to do too much, we've already seen hits up the middle and a hit on the opposite way here over the reach of Hastings. And the approach right now working for HSU. Yep, able to get a lot of contact today. Really getting the Shivana so far. We'll see how he bounces back. A visit from head coach Tim Scannell. We highlighted last week how you're never quite sure who is going to go out there, whether it's pitching coach Dave Smith, head coach Tim Scannell. One thing we did clarify is when you see Tim Scannell, likely not going to be a pitching change, more of a conversation being had. Coach Scannell actually thanking Dave Smith, saying all these years you've allowed me to not have to make a change. Always really hard to pull a guy during a game. So thank you for that. But he is always willing to give words of advice to the pitcher especially in these key moments. And this is certainly one of them. First and third, one away. Harden Simmons already up one. And they've got the number two hitter with the power hitting transfer is on deck and in the hole. We'll yep. see what's drawn up for Cole Antonelli here. Big moment in this game, Brian. If you're able to hold this to one, it might give some momentum to the offense. First pitch swinging right to Shivana. Gets it to Montreza on the first. Not in time, says the first base umpire. Nearly an inning ending double play. But one side effect of this one being right back to Shivana. It doesn't look like the runner came in from third. So the runner will stay at third. Still runners on the corner is really surprised after that throw was made to second that Ellington didn't come scurrying home. Yeah, I thought he would already be home. I was kind of waiting for you to call in that Harden Simmons had scored another run. But see it there. Gray jersey still on third base. Didn't take advantage of the opportunity and now it's up to Trinity. To take advantage of him staying there. So some curious base running from the Cowboys. Means that Joseph Shivana could get out of it unscathed. Colby Seltzer at the plate, big breaking ball, grounded to Montreza, flips it onto Harris. And once again, the magic man, Joseph Shavana, has runners all over the place in the inning, but none of them come across to score as the woes with runners in scoring position continue for Harden Simmons. Yeah, that was a big story that Coach Coleman told us about, hitting 171 last week with runners in scoring position, and it continues today. Nearly a double play earlier. Runner stays at third and able to get the out at second base, going the short way. The big break for Trinity there. Able to get some soft contact, and Shivana able to get out of another jam. They left 37 men on base in that three-game weekend at Concordia. Already five left on base through five innings, so not what they're wanting. But thankfully for them, if you're a Cowboy fan, Livingston has done his best to keep the Tigers quiet. Sun trying to peek out in San Antonio as we stick around here on Tiger Network. Just two hits for this Trinity offense, but very similar to last week. Didn't have a hit until the eighth inning of that first game. It was Christian Holloway 
who blooped in a single. Joey White was absolutely dominating the lineup and then didn't happen in time for game one. But game two and three, it was that spark at the end of the first game, a rally in the ninth, that then seemed to carry over into the end of the series. Well, they already have two hits now, so already off to a better start. But kind of similar, swinging early, swinging often, a lot of soft contact, and not really making Livingston work. He hasn't had a lot of, a lot of long at-bats, but the guy coming up next, Michael Montreza, able to make him work when he was up. We'll see if he can get something going for these Tigers. One interesting thing head coach Tim Scannell said to his team is that, sure, you have a leadoff hitter, when you pencil in the lineup. But he's only going to be the leadoff hitter exactly once that you can plan for, at least. It might happen that he leads off other innings, as we saw Ty Preston do last week. But after that, anybody could be the leadoff hitter. Montreza is the leadoff hitter in this inning. And what that means is that you have to have an on-base mentality. As a leadoff hitter, you want to make a pitcher work. You want to try to get on and set the table for your teammates. And he needs his team to have that mentality one through nine because you never know when it's going to be your turn to get an inning going. We've seen, though, a couple of first pitch swings even to start innings, and that is really not what the Tigers want to see. Right now, Montreza working the at-bat a little bit, but going to get called out on a third strike. That outside corner has been working for Livingston, and he reaches it once more. Yeah, it gets him on that outside corner, but it's a similar story as these, most of these other at-bats, getting behind, getting down 1-2, 0-2. And that's really putting Livingston in a great position where he can make the pitch he wants and take command of that at bat. You're getting a great look at why Caden Livingston has been named a preseason player to watch in the American Southwest Conference. Delivers a first pitch strike to Jack Peterson. It is a conference with a great baseball tradition. Whether you look at teams who have left the conference like UT Tyler or teams that are still in it like Concordia, Mary Harden Baylor. And the team Trinity's very familiar with, UT Dallas, all a part of the ASC. And Caden Livingston trying to bring Harden Simmons to glory. They have never won the conference all these years later. Hard to believe when we were prepping for this series. They've never won the conference. They've never gone to the NCAA playoffs. But if they get pitching like they're getting right now from Caden Livingston, just two hits and no walks allowed might be their year. Yeah, that, that's what Coach Coleman talked to us about is they've been in that championship, in their conference championship for, I think it was three years, he said, hadn't won in any of them, never gotten past that barrier. But the, one of my favorite quotes from that interview, when we kick that door down, it's going to be fun. He sees it very similar to that UT Dallas program. UT Dallas had never won the conference until 2018, and after they won that first one, they've now won three of the last four. So he sees Harden-Simmons making 18 ASC tournament appearances, never winning that title. Once they do break through, like you said, Cole, the floodgates might open up. And the preseason expectations are higher for Harden-Simmons despite that 0-3 start. Still lots of optimism in Abilene. Peterson, a soft grounder to short. He's going to beat it out, though. You see that speed on full display. No chance for Seltzer to get Peterson. So an infield single will get the Tigers going in the fifth. And that's what they talk about, good 90. This is why you do it. You never know when you're going to be able to run it out. I don't think there was a bobble or anything here. I think it was just a weird bounce and just a little slow getting to the second baseman. But you never, or shortstop, I should say, but you never know when you're going to be able to beat it out. So that's why you always got to run and see what you can do. Runner off with the pitch. Harris chops it to third. Long throw made over to first in time by Ozios. The runner does advance to second as the hit and run was on, but Harris pulled it instead of sending it the other way. Yeah, it's going to be second out here, but able to advance the runner from first, put him in scoring position, and we'll see what, be, what can be done here with this opportunity. Corson Hastings will be the man at the plate trying to drive home a runner in scoring position with two outs. Tigers down one in the bottom of the fifth. First pitch, a strike to Hastings. 0-1 today. Went 0 for 6 last weekend. Did appear in all three games, though. Started in two of them. Looking to come through at the bottom of the order. The San Antonio native. Can he come through? Livingston taking his time to deliver. Runner off. Hastings goes down to get it but it'll hang up there, and the center fielder, Ellington, has it with plenty of time. So the runners have been a plenty, but the runs have not. We are headed to the top of the sixth on Tiger Network. Harden Simmons hanging on to a 1-0 lead.
Game is really flying along here despite all the base runners. The pitcher is working out of trouble and keeping it exactly like it's been since the second batter of the game, Cole. Can you believe a run, two batters in, we thought, okay, maybe we're going to have an offensive explosion, but very similar to last Friday, kept quiet ever since. Yeah, both of these pitchers able to minimize base traffic and when there has been, able to really get out of it. Both done a good job, very efficient with their pitches and getting out of innings fast. Shavana has an 0-2 advantage on the Division I transfer Ozios here. Goes with the changeup. Beautiful pitch by Shavana. Gets a swing and a miss from Ozios. First out of the inning, gone by for Shavana. And with the Division I mention throughout the game for Harden Simmons, has to give a shout out to Trinity's own Division I transfers. You've got four of them that are currently playing Division I baseball and two of them especially had breakout games on opening day for Division I. You've got MJ Metz. What a debut for the Duke Blue Devils going with three hits and a home run. Also added a double. So playing ACC baseball doesn't get much bigger than that. Congratulations to MJ Metz. We certainly miss you here on Tiger Network. And then taking a look over a little higher than North Carolina up at Bryant. Brian Schaub getting... Used to the Northeast, where he's from, going two for three in his debut, scoring a run, drawing a walk. Really cool to see Tigers going from the Division Three level to the Division One level and showcasing just how much talent is located at Division Three and at Trinity in particular. Yeah, I like that you said Division Three as a whole. They're good representations. There's a lot of talent here at this level, and a lot of it going up to Division One, just like those two. Yeah, a name that comes to mind, Josh Fleming, a pitcher for the Tampa Bay Rays coming out of the Division Three level. Baseball's a very unique sport. As Cologne lifts this one to left field, Preston gets underneath it for the second out. It's a very unique sport, baseball, in that the minor league system really allows for anybody to make it. It's a grind. It's very difficult, but unlike football, basketball, even soccer in the United States, baseball has that tiered leveling to where you can come from any level, and if you spend your time, work hard, you just might make it. So we wish all the best to our Division I transfers. You know, Sammy Conti also got some action yesterday, playing for the Charlotte 49ers, only faced one hitter, walked him in his debut. And then Corey Cater at Kansas State. So that is four Division I transfers, not even mentioning Rafe Chamet. Last year played for the Boston College Eagles after graduating from Trinity. So talent everywhere you look, and so much talent right here with Joseph Shavana really getting on a roll in this sixth inning. Shavana working through him, looks very comfortable and very confident with his pitches, and one out away from going through six. He got a swing and a miss on a changeup to start the inning. Does he go to it? Goes with the breaking ball. Batter did not go around. Two and two the count. Six hits allowed by Shavana. Four strikeouts. What will this be? Will it be another infield hit? Not if Colt Harris has any say in it. He was busy early, has been quiet lately, but now back in action defensively to finish off a 1-2-3 inning for Joseph Shavana. The score remains 1-0 from San Antonio. Can the Tiger Bats wake up after this break?
little chilly for a dive in the pool, but you get a good look at it behind the baseball field. Had a couple close calls last weekend on foul balls. Will any Trinity Tigers hit it? You let us know. But if it keeps going like Caden Livingston has been so far, hard to get even a ball in the air, mostly ground outs, letting his defense work. But now the third time through the order, always very difficult for a starter, and he has Ty Preston, the leadoff man, up. And he is ahead of the count, 2-0. and Yeah, Ty Preston already doing a good job taking those first two pitches. And now up 3-0. That's exactly where he wants to be. His Tiger is getting down in the count quite a bit. Not this time, though. And look what happens when you take some pitches. A four-pitch walk and sound the alarm. That is the first walk allowed all year by Caden Livingston. Six innings last week, five innings this week, and he had not allowed a base on balls, but Ty Preston patiently waiting and gets it on four pitches. How about that? And you see why he hasn't had allowed a walk. Not a lot of stuff outside the zone really making them hit it, but able to be patient and get a four pitch walk. Now the leadoff walk sets up all sorts of opportunities. Could be a bunt, could be a steal, could be a hit and run. It is Christian Holloway at the plate. Oh, one the count. Breaking ball misses outside. You wonder if they draw something up. Not a lot of runners today. Just trying to find a way to get Ty Preston in the scoring position. And try Ty, and try Ty this Preston game. is going. Foul ball into the net. Ty Preston was successful stealing a bag last week. Plenty of speed in left and at first base currently. And Christian Holloway also very good handling the bat, sending it the other way. So perhaps why you had the hit and run on on that last pitch. Will it be a similar thing? No. Runner staying put. And the ball outside of the zone. Two balls, two strikes. Nobody out. Lead off walk. Trinity down one, but trying to get back into this game. Catcher setting up inside. Holloway pops it up to the right side. The sun starting to peek out, making it a tough play, but the catch is made by Kyler Reed. You see the turf has gotten brighter as the day has gone along. Always have to shield your eyes, but the right fielder did it and did it well. Yep, able to make that play, approaching foul territory, getting that first out. Just trying to keep that runner on first and do what they've been doing all day, getting out of innings with no damage. First out in the books for Livingston. Now he has to deal with the home run hitting catcher. Before that, he'll check in on Preston. We do have to give another shout out to Frank, the French Bulldog. He is in the building today, wearing a very cute sweater to protect him from the cold. But he will do anything to cheer on his catcher. Right here, the catcher grounding to the pitcher and grounding into a double play. So the Frank Magic not working in the bottom half of the sixth because Caden Livingston is dominating right now. Six shutout innings for the sophomore from Lorena. And the score remains 1-0 Harden Simmons heading to the top of the seventh. Don't go anywhere. A good finish certainly on hand. Top of the seventh, ready to get going. 
talked about the San Antonio Rodeo, all sorts of fried food happening over there at the fairgrounds. But Joseph Shivana, much healthier before his start. You know he likes to eat a steak from H-E-B, cook it himself in his dorm. And he also has another technique he uses to mellow out. What does he do on Fridays in class? But it's not really much of a class because it's pretty fun for him. Yeah, he has a guitar class, 8.30s on Fridays, goes to Einstein Bagels, gets his breakfast, and then goes and plays guitar. He says it helps him get concentrated for those Friday night starts, but today it's a Saturday. Has been pretty on point for most of the game, but he has given up many base hits like that one. Not too hard of contact, not going very far, but the Cowboys placing it perfectly to get their seventh base hit of the afternoon, and another with the leadoff variety. He'll have the catcher at the plate, Holt. Squares around the bunt, puts it down right in front of Lazera. He's gonna go to second, the pick made, and that's out. A laser of a throw by Lazera to get the lead runner. Montreza taking a tumble with that hard slide, losing the hat in the process, but we'll take a look at this incredible defensive play by the catcher. You called it, Brian, the laser from Lazera, able to rifle this one over there. Get him in time. They've been working on this all week. Bunting situations, getting that lead runner, finding ways to get that extra out and get him at third or second, able to get him at second there. And it's a big one to stop the runner from getting in scoring position. And Nick Lazera, cannon of an arm, he shows it there. So seven hits for Harden Simmons. They've drawn a couple of walks. But their base running hasn't been on point all game. And now five, four, three, double play. And I'd say that's a quick inning for Joseph Shavana. Just a few pitches working around the infield hit. His defense working to perfection. And he'll keep it right there, one to zero, as it's time to stretch. I don't think we can go anywhere because they're not giving us time to talk during the inning, Cole. I know, Joseph Shavana made quick work of that. And his defense helping him out with the double play. Well, that was really big, getting those bats right back out there, see if they can get something going. I want to go back to this guitar class you mentioned because we had to focus on the action, so much going on very quickly. But that's pretty cool, the starting pitcher, ace for the Trinity Tigers, and just on his free time, no big deal, also learning to play guitar. Yeah, it really helps him mellow him out. But he had a quiz on Friday, so we at Tiger Network hope that Joseph Giovanna did very, very well on his guitar quiz. Well, he's playing all the right notes on the mound. Have no doubt he plays all the right notes on the guitar. We'll take a brief break as you get a look at the brand new Dickey Hall on Trinity University's campus. We'll be right back. We hope you're having as much fun as we are in enjoying the drone footage from Trinity University's campus. Just stellar work. Thank you to Ryan Cedillo for manning that drone throughout the game. And we find ourselves back at the baseball diamond. Trinity still down one as Rigor trying to poke it the other way, but it goes foul. Caden Livingston really picking up right where he left off. Not only last start, just giving up four runs in six innings, but last year had a tremendous finish to the year as he misses on this 0-2 delivery. He only started one of his first six games, but then made his way into the rotation, started his final seven, and he allowed three runs or fewer in four of his last five starts. Became a very dependable arm for head coach Steve Coleman. 
And what Coleman likes is that in the first game of a series, he's someone you can count on to go deep into a game, save the bullpen for the rest of the weekend matchups. And he has done that exactly as planned. As he strikes out Ezra Gore here, the one, two sent him chasing high. The groove continues for the sophomore. Yeah, both of these pitchers in a nice groove, limiting the runs, but you said it, Brian, able to save the bullpen and it gives you more certainty. You get in those situations, you have more options later and you can use your best guys in high leverage positions. Brandon Nelson digging into the turf a little bit from the left side. Swings at the first pitch, little dribbler foul. Tiger hitters doing the pitcher some favors by swinging at so many first pitches. When they result in outs, it allows him to stay in those games longer. But Livingston certainly not complaining. Two pitches, two swings from Nelson, both of them foul balls, and he finds himself behind 0-2. Yeah, 0-2, a position that he's very familiar with Livingston is at this point. Seen that count a lot today. Goes with the changeup. Nelson does a nice job laying off. Already five punch outs for Livingston, looking for a sixth. Not gonna get it, another rifle into right field. But a diving catch made. The defensive display continues for Harden Simmons. This time, Kyler Reed, what looked to be a sure hit, turns into the second out of the inning. We'll get another look at that one, but the defense, just amazing today, Cole. Yeah, absolutely. Coach Coleman talked about some fielding concerns that he had from last week's series. I don't see any of it today. They'll get another opportunity and a little bobble, but they get to the bag in time. A near collision after the run through the base. But the yelling coming from the Cowboy fans in town, a one, two, three inning thanks to some stellar defensive plays. And we'll try to bring you some of those replays went so quickly that we're trying to catch up with the action, but that is seven shutout innings for Caden Livingston. And he's done a great job getting soft contact and letting his defense play behind him, and they've done an incredible job. As you're seeing the Brandon Nelson out here, great play by the right fielder, able to go and scoop that. But yeah, there, Coach Coleman talked about a lot of fielding concerns, none today, as really all nine have played really well. Yeah, we mentioned it at the top of the broadcast, nine fielding errors in just three games. A couple of them coming from his key infielders as well. Definitely allowed some unearned runs to come across four of them in those losses. And when you lose by one, when you lose by two, you look everywhere for some answers. That was a big part of the losing. But today, zero errors and well beyond that, the defense, web gem worthy. You might see some of these on SportsCenter. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. SportsCenter worthy, but... I think it goes back to the turf point. They played at Concordia, and I think they got familiar with that turf, and a lot of the bounces have been similar. Obviously, some very athletic plays here. Don't want to discount that, but I think that getting familiar with some of the bounces and how these balls are coming in is really helping them out and giving them some confidence here in this game. So believe it or not, it is time for the top of the eighth already in San Antonio. Joseph Shavana continues to work on the mound for the Tigers. That one run allowed came way back in the first inning. A leadoff double by the man you see at the plate, Luke Kirkbride. Swung at the very first pitch of the game. Put it down the line, left field. Then he went to third on a wild pitch and came across to score on a ground ball to short from Antonelli. Ever since then, nothing on the board. Lots of hits, lots of runners. But Shavana and Livingston showing why they are the number one starters for their respective teams. Both doing a good job getting out of jams with little to no damage for most of this game. Foul tip on the breaking ball from Shavana. And poor Joseph Shavana having to deal with no run support thus far this season. Allowed three runs last week to BSE and Trinity scored zero for him. And so far the same old story, but it's part of what he's had to learn as he gets ready for this 2-2. Breaking ball, beautiful. In the turf swing and a miss and Lazera takes care of it at first. Make it strikeout number five for Shavana, who you might remember last week, the story we said, how is he going to become the dude, a dominant arm? And Dave Smith saying a part of that 
is knowing not only do you have to shut down powerful offenses, you have to know that if you're facing a dominant arm on the other side who is going to shut down your offense, can you stick right with them? Can you get your offense in the game as long as you can to give them a shot at the end? And Joseph Shavana has done just that. No runs to show for it on his end, but he's at least giving his team a chance to work. Yeah, absolutely. Same, similar story to last week against Birmingham Southern. Gave the three, but really able to hold it down for a while there. And today gave up the one in the first inning. And the quote was, as a strikeout here, going to have to throw him out as it got in the dirt. Able to get out number two there. But the quote from Dave Smith was, can you trade zeros as long as it takes? And he gave up the one in the first inning, but since then it's been zero and zero and zero. And he's been trading zeros with Livingston all day. The breaking ball working very well for him in this top of the eighth, and the strikeout pitch showing up as the game goes along. Lots of contact early, but now 6Ks for Shavana. Goes with the breaking ball. First pitch line drive into the glove of Cole Terrace, and the quick action continues. Hope you're paying attention, folks. 1-0 the advantage for Harden-Simmons as we head to the bottom of the eighth on Tiger Network. Bottom of the eighth in San Antonio, and the starting pitcher still out there for the Harden-Simmons Cowboys. Why wouldn't he be seven innings of shutout baseball? Just three hits allowed. A bunt goes foul for Jack Peterson to start this inning. But it has been little damage done to number 10, the sophomore from Lorena, Texas. Who head coach Steve Coleman says is really throwing the ball much better than he ever has. He's dealt with some back injuries through his career but they love the way the ball is coming out of his hands. They could tell right when the preseason started, something was different with him, and they were spot on. Yeah, absolutely, showing it today. Jack Peterson bunting there, and just trying to find ways to get on base. And hitting isn't really working for them right now, only three hits so far. Just trying to make anything work. Peterson, one of those three hits, looks at a fastball on the outside part. Very few answers for the Tiger hitters off of Livingston. The 2-2 on the way gets him to roll over and it'll be foul. What's so interesting to note about Livingston's performance here is we were expecting Jet Forrest to be the catcher. Not only is he a power bat at the center of this Harden-Simmons lineup, but he and Livingston went to Lorena High School together. And that was that's something that Coleman mentioned gives them great chemistry as that one nearly touches the inside part. We'll take the count full. But it says Forrest calling games for Livingston is a really special duo because they know each other so well going back to high school. Well, it's been Holt behind the dish. And so far, so good. But a leadoff walk now for the second consecutive inning. And Peterson looking to do some damage on the base pass after drawing ball four. Jack Peterson able to make him work, able to take pitches when it counted. It will extend that at bat and get on base. Similar story to last inning. We'll see if they can catch in this time. And a quick correction there. It actually wasn't last inning, but these are going so quickly that they start to mesh together. It was the sixth inning in which the Tigers got a leadoff walk. It was Ty Preston who did not come around to score. 
But now the eighth inning looking to be a different story if you're the Tigers. Hoping to come up with some results. But they're going to have to wait on a full infield visit. Steve Coleman talking to his pitcher and everyone joining. A big moment in the game, trying to hang on to this one nothing lead. Trying to hold Jack Peterson at first base and get three outs to send this to the ninth with a chance to win. We've already seen a couple of hit and runs. We've seen runners take off a first for Trinity. So by bringing the whole infield in, Coleman likely saying, this is what you have to do if a runner goes. There's a bunt. Have to be aware of everything. We'll see what the infield alignment is coming off of the visit. It's looking like the third baseman, Ozios, will play in. Get a great look at it here. Bukowski holding the runner, Peterson. The infielders in the middle playing at double play depth. With Colt Harris at the plate, first pitch outside and up to Colt Harris. Colt Harris, definitely the type of bat you want in this situation. Coach Scandal does a great job spreading his talent throughout the lineup. Colt Harris considered one of the better hitters hitting towards the bottom. He gets a hold of one, sends it to center field, but he's going to have to backtrack is the runner because the center fielder Ellington makes the running catch. One of the better swings we've seen all day from Trinity but the result continues to be the same. Yeah, strong contact on this one. Not something we've seen a lot today. Just unfortunate that that was hit right to where the center fielder was, and it's going to be the first out of the inning. Now, of course, in Hastings, we'll get an opportunity after Peterson dives back safely. Hastings, an athletic first baseman. You saw it on the pickoff earlier. Help Joseph Shavana nab a base runner. Now has to wait as Livingston checks on the runner a couple of times. But if these first few lineups are any indication, Corson will get plenty of playing time. Takes a fastball high for strike number one. Former Churchill Charger. Not too far from campus, just about 15, 20 minutes north. Having to wait a ton, though, on three different pickoff attempts. You don't see any action in the Harden-Simmons bullpen, or in the Trinity bullpen, for that matter. So these coaches trusting their respective starters, Shavana and Livingston. Count even up at one, with Peterson still over there at first. Tigers looking for their first run of the afternoon in the bottom of the eighth. Hastings swings through a changeup. Out in front of it, and now Livingston will try to put him away. Just got to find a way to get Jack Peterson over to second. Give yourself a chance to bring him in. Peterson's going, swing and a miss, strike three. The throw gets into center field, so Peterson will round into third. Sliding in safely now, 90 feet away from tying the ball game up. Oh, this is exactly the break they needed. The throw's just going to get through, and Jack Peterson able to scamper on over the third base. You're going to see the replay here. Great pitch on the strikeout. Just going to get under the shortstop there. And Jack Peterson, the awareness to get right back up and get all the way over to third. A position for Trinity with only one out, oh, two outs actually, to bring him in and tie this game. Ty Preston. Will be the Tiger to try to bring him in, the only Tiger to get a hit in each of the first three games. Can he get one in this fourth? In a big spot, lines it to left. Watch out, bullpen. Foul ball to even up one ball, one strike. Got good contact on that one. He can do that and put it in play. That's going to score a run. Preston awaiting the 1-1. Looks at it in the turf to get ahead of Livingston. And has a conversation with the umpire. See just a little bit of action, some stretching, but no one warming as Preston looking to tie this game up, chops it up the middle. It's going to get through for a base hit. Ty Preston delivers, and in the bottom of the eighth, the Tigers tie it up at one. Great piece of hitting there by Ty Preston, able to do exactly what he needed to, just find a way to get Jack Peterson in. Gets on top of it. Just an unfortunate bounce right in front of Livingston, not able to field that one. That's exactly what you need when your offense is struggling. Just find a way to get the runner on, get him over and get him in. And they do it to tie this game. 
Now that ball gets away from the catcher, Holt Preston rounding second, thinking about third. Will head back, but does advance 90 feet. And now Holloway with a chance to put the Tigers up before we head to the ninth. It's a Tiger offense that when you wake them up, it comes quickly. It's been a quiet, quiet afternoon. Caden Livingston, seven innings of shutout baseball. But with two outs in the eighth, the Tigers alive and well. Holloway underneath one here, a high sky. Who's gonna call it? Right fielder charging in, makes the catch for the third out of the inning. But Trinity ties it up at one. Heading to the top of the nine, Ty Preston continues to be the clutch hitter the Tigers need. And another fantastic finish on Tiger Network after a quick break. Joseph Shavana might have to wipe his eyes a little bit and make sure he really does see a run in the run column when he's on the mound. But that is a one on the board for Trinity. His offense tying it up in the bottom of the eighth. And Dave Smith, Tim Scandal trusting him to pitch the top of the ninth in what is now a tied ball game. Yeah, Dave Smith talked to us about the difference between going seven and going eight and nine. That's two last in it, those last two innings. Really hard on the pitcher, but they're trusting Joseph Shavana, their ace to carry this one home on top of the ninth, just trying to keep this a tie score and give him a chance to win in this next half inning. Lefty Ozios goes the other way. That's gonna get in the gap and down all the way to the wall. Peterson gets it off the bounce. Ozio standing in at second with a leadoff double. Yeah, leadoff double. Just able to take this one. He called it well right in that gap. Finding that gap between the left and center fielders. But this has kind of been the blueprint all game. It's the eighth hit for Harden, for Harden Simmons. Only one run. Giovanna's been able to get out of a lot of these. He's going to need to do it again to keep the score tied. Jeremy Cologne shows bunt, gets it down, but foul. The DH 0 for 2 has drawn a walk today. He's the senior from Canabanas, Puerto Rico. Boricua in the house today. And back with Harden Simmons after a brief tenure at UT Dallas. A big thumper in the middle of the lineup. Goes the other way. Should be enough room for Gore to get it. It is. Azio's trying for third. The throw from Gore not going to be in time. So Cologne does his job, moves the runner over. And with one away, the go-ahead run 90 feet away. Yep, does his job. Once, once that runner gets on second with the double, the goal is to bring him in. Able to do half of that there, get him to third. Trevana, nearly 100 pitches here. Hopefully he's not too worn out. He's gonna need to get two more outs here. Infield playing mostly in. First pitch, a change up for a strike to Kyler Reed. One for three on the day. We saw him slap a single the other way earlier. Holloway at third, Montrez at short, Harris at second, and Hastings at first will try to get Ozios if he tries to score on a ground ball. Kyler Reed, meanwhile, trying to get something in the air. Infield playing very shallow as well. So far, though, no contact. A changeup in the turf that gets Reed swinging. And Shavana ahead, one and two. Reed just tr probably trying to get a sack fly here just like they did earlier. Trying to bring that runner in and take the lead. 
He's a freshman from New Deal, Texas. That's gonna be quite the New Deal for him. A bouncer up the middle to put Harden Simmons on top. And after going 0 for 9 last week, two key hits for Kyler Reed. Yes. What you get when you bring the infield in, the danger is a little ground ball can get through easier and the frustration clear from Joseph Shavano, who has pitched a spectacular game, but the contact coming at the wrong time here. Well, he's gonna get exactly what he wants. It's a low pitch that he's gonna get on top of, and it's gonna be a ground ball. Just a tough bounce, difficult to field, and able to get through. But a double play off the little pop-up to second base. The runner Reed read it wrong, and Harris doubles him up. So the base running blunders continue for the Cowboys, but not before the second run of the game comes across to score. Kyler Reed, the RBI single, to put HSU up, trying to steal game one of this three-game series. Very interested to see who the man on the mound will be as the suspense builds, but it does look like Coach Coleman going to a new arm and he is, that's gonna be Wyatt Tumlinson, the junior from Johnson City, Texas, after we take a quick break on Tiger Network. It had been 0, 0, 0, 0. You see it. So many zeros on your board. But then suddenly, bottom of the eighth, top of the ninth, all the action. Trinity ties it up at one. Harden Simmons strikes back to jump in front. Two to one. And three outs will be all the Tigers have to work with. And they're going to be facing a new pitcher for the first time. Wyatt Tomlinson, someone who Coach Coleman says is a bullet that cannot be wasted in that bullpen. Someone he wants to go to often and as often as he can because he is so talented and so trustworthy in the eyes of these coaches. Yeah, he said that when we asked him who do you want in a high leverage situation, he was the first guy he brought up, and he's the first guy he's going to bring up in this situation, up a run, just trying to lock it down and get out of here with a game one victory. Last year, Tomlinson made eight appearances. Three of those were starts, but later in the year, trusted in the bullpen, had a 5.73 ERA in 22 innings, but he struck out 20 guys in 22 innings. And so far this year, someone they've trusted late in the game against Pacific Lutheran last week. He went two innings, struck out two, and gave up no runs. And he has quite the test with Nick Lazera signifying the heart of the Tiger lineup. The first pitch from Tomlinson, a ball low. Nick Lazera, definitely one of the guys that you want in this situation as your Trinity. We'll see if Frank has anything to say about what happens here. One's low this time though, it hits the zone. Lazera from the left side of the plate this time. Switch hitting catcher, one for three on the day to build a little three game hit streak so far. Right now looking to get on base for his Tigers. Swing the other way, it's gonna drop in. Center fielder cuts it off, but the lead off man on base in the form of Nick Lazera. Good piece of hitting. Able to get it in in front of the outfield. That's exactly what they need. Get that first guy on. Maybe shake up the pitcher a little bit. First, pit, first at bat that he's faced. Gives up a hit. Not the way you want to start. We'll see how he responds, but exactly the way Trinity wants to start. Having a guy that they can bring in, and Ezra Gore, the man to do it. Ezra Gore promised the hit streak would start today. 0 for 3 so far. 
Will he square around the bunt with the runner on? He does. Looks at a strike on the outside part. We've got a pinch runner at first base for the catcher, Lazera. That's Jack Baker over there. Speedy runner, stole two bases last year, was not caught. And Gore continues to show bunt. Chases it for strike number two. The slider working to perfection for Tomlinson. And now will Gore still bunt with two strikes in the count? Might look at Baker taking off here. Lead isn't huge. Tomlinson checking on him, not going. And the foul ball back into the net. Ezra Gore, second team all-conference in football. First team all-conference in baseball. First team all-region in baseball. Looking to come through in the bottom of the ninth. Behind 0-2, awaiting the pitch from the junior. Lays off of one outside. Good take there by Gore, able to get that first ball. Hanging around, just trying to pick his opportunity. Trying to move Jack Baker over. Baker inching off of first. Staying put, and a swing and a miss from Ezra Gore. Slams the bat into the turf. Big first out for the closer of Harden-Simmons. And using that slider in these key situations in the at-bat, no different there. Able to get Ezra Gore swinging on that one. Pressure continuing to build on these Tiger hitters. Can Brandon Nelson deal with it here? He has hit the ball extremely hard his last two times up. Doubled and then was robbed of a base hit in right field. Dangerous spot for a pitch there. That's his wheelhouse as a left-handed hitter. But a first pitch strike for Tomlinson. Nelson, the designated hitter, saying he likes being the designated hitter when you're hitting well, but when you're not, it's tough to think about it all game. Well, what is he thinking about here? Looks at a breaking ball that just misses low. Coach Scandal talked about big moments and the players that want that big moment. He mentioned Brandon Nelson as a guy who wants to be in that spot. He's got it here. We'll see what he can do with it. Pitch on the way from Tomlinson. Nelson tries to turn on it, squibs it to third. Going to go to first, not second, to get the safe out. So the tying run moves over to second base, but more importantly for the Cowboys, just one out away from wrapping up a game one victory. A bit of a trade there, able to get that second out. But Trinity able to move Jack Baker. Brandon Nelson, he want him to get a hit there, but able to do his job. Puts it to the third base side, so that he has to make the choice to get one and not a double play ball. And it's going to be up to Montreza to see if he can bring Jack Baker in to tie this game. Pitch in the turf, ball one. Baker stays put at second. Baker the pinch runner coming in for Nick Lazera, who got things going with an opposite field single. His second hit of the game. But Baker has not been able to run very far since then. Gore struck out, Nelson grounded out. Can Montreza bring him home? The pitch from Tomlinson. Lined into left field, not gonna be caught by the dive. The runner coming across the throw in time to get him out. And that's out number 27 for Harden Simmons in highly dramatic fashion. What a throw by Cole Antonelli to send the Cowboys home with a game one win. Good job by Michael Montreza, able to get the hit. But even better throw there. Great job cutting off Jack Baker. And not even close, able to get him well before the plate. You said it, not even close. Baker had not even gotten to third when Antonelli already had the ball in hand, but that's what a struggling offense might force. Haven't gotten the hits when you need them, so you finally get one. Third base coach Andrew Waters feeling the need to send him to tie it up. You force a perfect play, you got a perfect play. And that's a game one win for the Cowboys. Gonna be riding their high horse in the game two, that's for sure, Cole. Yeah, well said, Brian. Able to get the game one victory. We'll see how Trinity responds. 
But I think it's honestly a great opportunity for Trinity, not going well offensively, able to get right back out there, because that's what you want as a competitor, to have that chance to go do it again. And they're able to do it once game two starts today. A baseball game that goes nine innings that takes fewer than two hours. I challenge you to find a game that has ever had that. But that's exactly what we had here. Two starting pitchers that were working with their best stuff from the beginning. But ultimately, the Harden-Simmons staff, a combination of Caden Livingston and Wyatt Tomlinson, get it done. Hold this powerful Trinity offense to just one run. And they're going to be feeling good in the second game of the doubleheader. We hope you enjoyed that one, and we hope you stick around with us for game two of this doubleheader. Should be about a 30-minute break. That's what it typically is. So stick around. Don't go very far. Grab some food. Grab a drink. And be back to see what the Cowboys and the Tigers have on tap for game two.